In today's message, I want to talk to you about a topic that is crucial for success in all areas of life, self-confidence. It's something that we all struggle with at some point in our lives, whether it's in our personal relationships, our careers, or even just our day-to-day -day interactions with others. But the good news is, you are not alone in this struggle. I've seen it time and time again where people let their lack of self-confidence hold them back from reaching their full potential, and I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. I've spent decades studying and teaching the principles of personal development, and I can confidently say that mastering self-confidence is a skill that can be learned and cultivated. In this video, I'm going to share with you five ways to do just that. So if you're tired of feeling insecure and unsure of yourself, if you're ready to take control of your life and achieve your goals with unwavering confidence, then this message is for you. By the end of this video, you will have the tools and strategies to turn your self-confidence around and become the best version of yourself. Let's get started. Starting with number five, which is mastering self-confidence by taking care of yourself. Self-confidence is not something that can be achieved overnight. It is a journey that requires dedication, self-awareness, and, most importantly, self-care. Let me tell you a story. When I was young, I lacked self-confidence. I was constantly comparing myself to others and doubting my abilities. But then I realized that I was neglecting the most important person in my life, myself. I was not taking care of myself physically, mentally, and emotionally. And that's when I understood that self-care is the foundation of self-confidence. So how can we take care of ourselves to boost our self-confidence? Let me share with you the four pillars of self-care. The first pillar is physical self-care. Our bodies are our temples, and we must treat them with love and respect. This means nourishing our bodies with healthy food, staying active, and getting enough rest. When we take care of our physical well-being, we feel more energized, confident, and ready to take on any challenge that comes our way. The second pillar is mental self-care. Our minds are powerful, and we must learn to tame them. Negative self-talk and limiting beliefs can hold us back from reaching our full potential. That's why it is crucial to practice self-awareness and mindfulness. Be aware of your thoughts and replace any negative ones with positive affirmations. Believe in yourself, and you will see a significant improvement in your self-confidence. The third pillar is emotional self-care. Our emotions play a significant role in our overall well-being. It is essential to acknowledge and process our emotions, whether they are positive or negative. Find healthy ways to express your emotions, such as journaling, talking to a friend, or seeking professional help if needed. When we take care of our emotional well-being, we become more resilient and confident in handling any situation that comes our way. The fourth and final pillar is spiritual self-care. Spiritual self-care is about finding inner peace and purpose in life. It could be through meditation, spending time in nature, or practicing gratitude. When we connect with our inner selves and find meaning in our lives, we become more confident and fulfilled individuals. So my friends, these are the four pillars of self-care that will lead you to master self-confidence. But remember, self-care is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process that requires consistent effort and dedication, Make it a priority to take care of yourself every day. Now let me leave you with some practical tips to incorporate self-care into your daily routine. Firstly, schedule time for self-care. Just like any other important task, make it a point to set aside time for yourself every day. It could be as simple as taking a walk, reading a book, or indulging in a hobby. Secondly, learn to say no. We often feel guilty for saying no to others, but it is crucial to prioritize our well-being. If something does not align with your values or drains your energy, it's okay to decline. Lastly, surround yourself with positive and supportive people. The people we surround ourselves with can have a significant impact on our self-confidence. So choose your company wisely and spend time with those who uplift and encourage you. Which leads us to number four, which is mastering self-confidence by surrounding yourself with positive people. Now, you may be wondering, why is this so important? Well, let me tell you, the people you surround yourself with have a huge impact on your mindset, your thoughts, and ultimately, your level of self-confidence. Think about it. If you are constantly surrounded by negative people who are always complaining, doubting themselves and others, how do you think that will affect your own thoughts and beliefs? 
It's like a virus slowly infecting your mind and making you doubt yourself as well. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with positive, uplifting people who believe in themselves and in you, how do you think that will impact your own mindset? It's like a breath of fresh air, filling you with positivity and self-assurance. Now, I'm not saying that you should only surround yourself with people who constantly tell you how amazing you are. That's not what true positivity is about. It's about surrounding yourself with people who genuinely care for you, who support you, and who believe in your potential. These are the people who will lift you up when you are feeling down, who will remind you of your strengths when you are doubting yourself, and who will push you to be the best version of yourself. But let's be real, sometimes it's not easy to find these kinds of people. We live in a world where negativity seems to be the norm. So what can we do to surround ourselves with positive people? Firstly, we need to be aware of the people we are currently surrounding ourselves with. Are they adding value to our lives, or are they bringing us down? If it's the latter, it may be time to reevaluate those relationships. It's okay to distance yourself from negative people, even if they are family or longtime friends. Remember, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose wisely. Secondly, seek out positive people. They are out there, I promise you. Join groups or communities that align with your interests and values. Attend events or conferences where you can meet like-minded individuals. And when you do meet someone who radiates positivity, don't be afraid to strike up a conversation and get to know them. You never know, they could become a great friend and a positive influence in your life. And finally, be a positive person yourself. The law of attraction states that like attracts like. So if you want to surround yourself with positive people, you need to be a positive person yourself. Be kind, be uplifting, and be supportive of others. Not only will this attract positive people into your life, but it will also make you feel good about yourself and boost your own self-confidence. Which leads us to number three, which is mastering self-confidence by learning from failures. Now, I know what you may be thinking, failures. How do failures help us build self-confidence? But let me tell you, my friends, failures are not something to be feared. In fact, they are our greatest teachers. You see, failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. It is an essential ingredient in the recipe for success. Think about it. Every successful person you know has faced failure at some point in their journey. But what sets them apart is how they handle those failures. They don't let failures define them or discourage them. Instead, they use them as stepping stones to reach their goals. They learn from their mistakes, they adapt, and they keep moving forward. And that, my friends, is the key to mastering self-confidence. When we learn from our failures, we gain valuable insights about ourselves and our abilities. We learn what works and what doesn't. We learn our strengths and weaknesses. And most importantly, we learn that failure is not the end, but an opportunity to grow and improve. Now, I know it's not easy to face failures. It can be a blow to our self-confidence and leave us feeling defeated. But the truth is, failure is inevitable. It is a part of life. And the sooner we accept it, the sooner we can learn from it and use it to our advantage. So what are some practical ways to learn from failures and use them to boost our self-confidence? Let me share with you three steps that have helped me and countless others on our journey to success. Firstly, we must change our perception of failure. Instead of seeing it as something negative, we must view it as a learning opportunity. We must shift our mindset from, I failed, to, I learned. This simple change in perspective can make all the difference. It allows us to see failures as a necessary part of our growth and development. Secondly, we must take responsibility for our failures. It's easy to blame external factors or other people for our failures. But the truth is, we are in control of our actions and decisions. And when we take responsibility, we also take back the power to change and improve. We must be willing to own up to our mistakes and learn from them. And lastly, we must have a growth mindset. This means believing that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through hard work and dedication. When we have a growth mindset, we see failures as opportunities to learn and improve, rather than a reflection of our worth or capabilities. My friends, learning from failures is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process. We will continue to face failures throughout our lives. But it is how we respond to them that matters. 
and as we continue to learn and grow, we will see our self-confidence soar to new heights. Which leads us to number two, which is mastering self-confidence by setting achievable goals. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, why are we talking about goals when we're supposed to be talking about confidence? Well, my friends, let me tell you this. Setting achievable goals is the foundation of building self-confidence. It is the key to unlocking your true potential and unleashing the power within you. You see, self-confidence is not something that you were born with. It is not a trait that some people have and others don't. Self-confidence is a skill that can be learned and developed. And just like any other skill, it requires practice, dedication, and a clear plan of action. And that is where setting achievable goals comes into play. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt lost, unmotivated, or unsure of yourself? Have you ever looked at successful people and wondered how they got to where they are today? Well, let me tell you a little secret. They didn't get there by chance. They got there by setting achievable goals and working towards them every single day. Setting achievable goals gives you a sense of direction. It helps you focus your energy and efforts towards something that is meaningful and important to you. It gives you a purpose and a reason to wake up every morning with a fire in your belly. And when you have a clear goal in mind, you will be amazed at how confident and determined you become. But here's the catch. Your goals need to be achievable. They need to be realistic and within your reach. I'm not saying that you shouldn't dream big, but your goal should be something that you can actually work towards and achieve. Setting unrealistic goals will only lead to disappointment and demotivation. So be honest with yourself and set goals that are challenging yet attainable. Now, let me share with you a simple yet effective method for setting achievable goals. It's called the SMART method. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. First and foremost, your goals should be specific. This means that they should be clearly defined and well-defined. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, be specific and say, I want to start my own business and make a profit of $100,000 in the next two years. Next, your goal should be measurable. This means that you should be able to track your progress and see how far you've come. Going back to our previous example, you can measure your progress by tracking your sales and profits each month. Thirdly, your goal should be achievable. As I mentioned earlier, your goals should be challenging yet attainable. Don't set yourself up for failure by setting unrealistic goals. Start small and work your way up. Moving on, your goals should also be relevant. This means that they should align with your values, beliefs, and long-term vision. If your goals are not relevant to your overall purpose, you will struggle to stay motivated and committed. Lastly, your goals should be time-bound. This means that you should have a deadline for when you want to achieve your goal. Having a timeline creates a sense of urgency and helps you stay focused and on track. Now, setting achievable goals is just the first step. The real work begins when you start taking action towards those goals. And let me tell you, the journey towards achieving your goals will not be easy. There will be obstacles, challenges, and setbacks. But remember, Every time you overcome a hurdle, your confidence grows stronger. Which leads us to number one, which is mastering self-confidence by practicing self-affirmations. Now, some of you may be wondering, what are self-affirmations? Simply put, they are positive statements that we repeat to ourselves in order to reprogram our subconscious mind. You see, our minds are like a garden, and the thoughts we plant in it will determine the fruits we harvest. If we constantly plant seeds of self-doubt and negativity, we will reap a harvest of insecurity and low self-esteem. But if we plant seeds of self-love and positivity, we will reap a bountiful harvest of confidence and self-assurance. So why are self-affirmations so powerful? It's because our subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what is real and what is imagined. When we repeat positive statements to ourselves, our mind starts to believe them, and our actions align with our beliefs. It's like programming a computer. The more we input positive affirmations, the more our mind will start to operate in a positive manner. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't believe in myself. How can I say these positive statements and expect them to work? And my answer to that is, you have to start somewhere. Believe it or not, self-confidence is not something that comes naturally to most people. 
It is a skill that can be learned and mastered through consistent practice. And that's where self-affirmations come in. Think of it this way. If you wanted to become a great athlete, you wouldn't just sit on the couch and expect to become one. You would have to put in the work, practice every day, and eventually, you would see results. The same goes for self-confidence. You have to put in the work and practice self-affirmations every day. Now, let's talk about how to create effective self-affirmations. The first step is to identify your limiting beliefs. These are the negative thoughts that hold you back and make you doubt yourself. Once you have identified them, you can start to create positive statements that counteract those beliefs. For example, if you believe that you are not smart enough, your affirmation could be, I am intelligent and capable of achieving anything I set my mind to. The key is to make your affirmations personal, present tense, and positive. Use words like, I am, or, I can, to make them more powerful. And don't just say them, feel them. Imagine yourself as the confident person you want to become and say your affirmations with conviction. Now, I want to address a common misconception about self-affirmations. Some people think that by saying positive statements, they are denying reality. But that's not true. Self-affirmations are not about denying your current circumstances. They are about creating a new reality for yourself. They are about building a strong foundation of self-belief that will help you overcome any obstacles that come your way. I also want to emphasize the importance of consistency. Just like with any other skill, you have to practice self-affirmations every day. Make it a part of your daily routine. Say them in the morning when you wake up and before you go to bed at night. Then don't just limit yourself to saying them out loud. Write them down, post them on your mirror, or carry them with you throughout the day. The more you expose yourself to these positive statements, the more they will become ingrained in your mind. Now, I want to share with you a personal story about the power of self-affirmations. When I was starting my career, I had a lot of self-doubt and fear of failure. But I started practicing self-affirmations every day, and slowly but surely, my confidence grew. I went from being a shy and insecure young man to a successful entrepreneur and motivational speaker. And it all started with the power of self-affirmations. As I always say, the greatest gift you can give yourself is a healthy self-image. And the greatest gift you can give others is a positive example. So let's lead by example and master self-confidence through the practice of self-affirmations. Thank you. Today, I'd like to discuss something crucial for success in any aspect of life, mindset. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in chaos and lose sight of our thoughts and beliefs. However, your mindset is the foundation of everything you do. It determines your actions, decisions, and ultimately your results. That's why in this video, I want to share with you five powerful ways to master your mindset and achieve the success you desire. I understand that many of you may feel overwhelmed, stuck, or even defeated by your current mindset. But I want you to know that you are not alone. We all face challenges and obstacles when it comes to our mindset. The good news is we have the power to change it. By listening to this message and implementing these five strategies, you can turn things around and create a powerful mindset that will lead you to success. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a student, a parent, or anyone striving for personal growth, this video is for you. Are you ready to take control of your mindset and transform your life? Then let's dive in and discover the five ways to master your mindset. Remember, your mindset is the key to unlocking your full potential. Let's get started. Starting with number five, the fifth way to master your mindset is practicing gratitude. As a personal development expert, I've seen time and time again the power of gratitude in transforming individuals into their best selves. It is a simple yet profound practice that can bring about immense joy, peace, and success in our lives. But before we dive into the power of gratitude, let me ask you this. How many of you woke up this morning feeling grateful for the gift of another day? How many of you took a moment to appreciate the roof over your head, the food on your table, and the people in your life who love and support you? Gratitude is not just a feeling. It is a mindset. It is a way of looking at the world and finding the good in every situation. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. It's easy to be grateful when everything is going well. But what about when life throws us a curveball? When we face challenges and setbacks, it can be difficult to find anything to be grateful for. 
But I want to challenge you to see gratitude as a tool to help you overcome those obstacles and come out stronger on the other side. Gratitude is not about denying our problems or pretending they don't exist. It is about shifting our perspective and finding the lessons and blessings in every situation. As the saying goes, what you focus on expands. When we focus on the negative, we only attract more negativity into our lives. But when we choose to focus on the positive, we invite more positivity and abundance into our lives. So how do we practice gratitude in our daily lives? It starts with being mindful and present in the moment. We live in a fast-paced world where we are constantly bombarded with distractions. We are always thinking about the next task, the next goal, the next thing we want to achieve. But in doing so, we often forget to appreciate the present moment. We forget to be grateful for what we have right now. I want to share with you a simple but powerful practice that has transformed my life, keeping a gratitude journal. Every day, take a few minutes to write down at least three things you are grateful for. It could be something as small as a good cup of coffee or something as big as your health. The key is to focus on the feeling of gratitude as you write it down. This simple practice will not only help you cultivate a grateful mindset, but will also serve as a reminder of all the good in your life when you are feeling down. Another way to practice gratitude is by expressing it to others. How often do we take the people in our lives for granted? We assume they know how much we appreciate them, but how often do we actually tell them? Take the time to express your gratitude to those who have made a positive impact in your life. It could be a simple thank you note, a heartfelt conversation, or a small gesture of kindness. Not only will it make their day, but it will also deepen your relationships and bring more love and positivity into your life. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. What about when things are not going well? When we are facing challenges and struggles, it can be difficult to find anything to be grateful for. But I want to remind you that even in our darkest moments, there is always something to be grateful for. It could be the lessons we are learning, the strength we are building, or the support of our loved ones. As the saying goes, in every negative, there is a positive waiting to be found. Practicing gratitude also helps us cultivate a mindset of abundance. When we are grateful for what we have, we are sending a message to the universe that we are content and fulfilled. And in return, the universe responds by bringing more blessings into our lives. It is a powerful cycle that can help us attract more success, happiness, and abundance into our lives. Now, I want to talk to you about the fourth way to master your mindset, by embracing failure. I know what you might be thinking, why would anyone want to embrace failure? We have been conditioned to fear failure, to avoid it at all costs. But I am here to tell you that failure is not something to be feared, but rather something to be embraced. Why? Because failure is a necessary part of the journey towards success. Think about it. Every successful person you know has failed at some point in their lives. Thomas Edison failed over a thousand times before he invented the light bulb. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for TV before becoming one of the most influential media personalities in the world. These individuals did not let failure stop them. They used it as fuel to propel them toward their dreams. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is a stepping stone toward it. It teaches us valuable lessons and helps us grow and improve. But in order to embrace failure, we must first change our perspective on it. We must see it as an opportunity rather than a setback. One way to do this is by reframing our thoughts. Instead of saying, I failed, say, I learned. Instead of seeing failure as the end, see it as a new beginning. This shift in mindset can make all the difference in how we handle failure and use it to our advantage. Another way to embrace failure is by understanding that it is a natural part of the learning process. Just like a child learning to walk, we must stumble and fall before we can walk with confidence. In the same way, we must fail before we can succeed. Failure is not a sign of weakness but a sign of growth and progress. Moreover, Failure allows us to push ourselves out of our comfort zones and take risks. It forces us to think outside the box and come up with new solutions. As the saying goes, if you want something you've never had, you must be willing to do something you've never done. Failure is a necessary ingredient in the recipe for success. But perhaps the most important reason to embrace failure is that it builds resilience. In life, 
We will face many challenges and setbacks, but it is our ability to bounce back from them that will determine our success. Resilience is like a muscle. The more we use it, the stronger it becomes. And failure is the perfect opportunity to flex that muscle and build our resilience. So, my friends, I urge you to embrace failure. Do not let it discourage you or hold you back. Instead, use it as a tool to propel you toward your goals and dreams. As Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Now, I want to leave you with a few practical tips on how to embrace failure and use it to your advantage. Reframe your thoughts. Instead of seeing failure as a negative, see it as an opportunity to learn and grow. Learn from your mistakes. Take the time to reflect on your failures and identify what went wrong. Use this knowledge to improve and do better next time. Keep a positive attitude. It can be easy to get discouraged when we fail, but it is important to maintain a positive attitude. Remember, failure is not the end. It is just a temporary setback. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes, we need a fresh perspective to see things in a different light. Don't be afraid to reach out to others for advice and support. Now, on to number three. The third way to master your mindset is by surrounding yourself with positive influences. Have you ever heard the saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Well, it's true. The people we surround ourselves with have a huge impact on our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. They can either lift us up or bring us down. That's why it's crucial to carefully choose the people we allow into our lives. We are all influenced by our environment, whether we realize it or not. Our minds are like sponges, absorbing everything around us. That's why it's important to surround ourselves with positive influences that will help us grow and become the best version of ourselves. So, how do we surround ourselves with positive influences? The first step is to identify the people in our lives who have a positive impact on us. These are the people who inspire us, motivate us, and push us to become better. They could be our family, friends, mentors, or even colleagues. The next step is to limit our exposure to negative influences. These are the people who constantly bring us down, discourage us, and drain our energy. They could be the naysayers, the complainers, or the ones who always see the glass as half empty. Now, I'm not saying that we should completely cut these people out of our lives, but we should limit our interactions with them. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences also means immersing ourselves in positive environments. This could be attending seminars, workshops, or conferences where we can learn from successful and inspiring individuals. It could also mean joining a mastermind group or a community of like-minded individuals who share our goals and values. Now I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I don't have any positive influences in my life? Well, my friend, it's time to go out and find them. You see, we are not limited to the people we already know. We can always expand our network and meet new people who can have a positive impact on our lives. One way to do this is by volunteering or getting involved in community service. Not only will you be giving back to society, but you also have the opportunity to meet new people and make a positive impact on their lives. Another way is by joining clubs or organizations that align with our interests and goals. This will not only help us expand our network but also surround ourselves with like-minded individuals who can support and motivate us. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences also means being selective with the information we consume. In today's digital age, we are bombarded with information from various sources, and not all of it is positive. That's why it's important to be mindful of the content we consume, whether it's through social media, news outlets, or even the books we read. We should strive to feed our minds with positive and uplifting information that will help us grow and expand our mindset. Now I want to share with you a personal experience that highlights the power of positive influences. When I was just starting out in my career, I had the opportunity to work with a successful businessman who became my mentor. He was a positive influence in my life, constantly pushing me to grow and learn. He taught me valuable lessons about success, mindset, and personal development. And I can say without a doubt that he played a significant role in shaping me into the person I am today. But it's not just about finding positive influences, it's also about being a positive influence ourselves. 
We should strive to be the kind of person that others want to surround themselves with. We can do this by being kind, supportive, and encouraging towards others. We should also be willing to share our knowledge and experiences with others, just like my mentor did with me. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences is not just about achieving success, it's also about living a happy and fulfilling life. When we surround ourselves with positive people, we are more likely to adopt their positive mindset and outlook on life. We become more optimistic, resilient, and grateful for what we have. And as a result, we attract more positivity into our lives. Our mindset is not just a reflection of our reality, it can also be our biggest obstacle. Our thoughts and beliefs shape our actions, and our actions determine our results. So if we want to achieve success in any aspect of our lives, we must first master our mindset. And that brings me to goal setting. Setting goals is the foundation of personal development. It is the first step towards creating the life you desire. Without a clear destination in mind, how can we expect to reach our desired destination? Let me share with you a story. When I was 25 years old, I was working as a stock clerk in a small store. I was living paycheck to paycheck, and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. One day, my mentor asked me a simple question, what do you want in life? And I couldn't answer that question. I had never thought about it before. That's when I realized that I needed to set goals for myself. So I sat down and wrote down a list of things I wanted to achieve. I wanted to become financially independent, travel the world, and impact people's lives. And let me tell you, my friends, once I had a clear vision of what I wanted, everything changed. I started taking action towards my goals, and within a few years, I was able to achieve everything I had written down on that piece of paper. But here's the thing, setting goals is not just about writing them down and forgetting about them. It's about creating a plan of action and consistently working towards them. Goals without action are just dreams, and dreams, my friends, are just fantasies. But when we combine our goals with consistent action, that's when we start to see real results. I know that setting goals can be intimidating for some of you. You may be afraid of failure or not knowing where to start. But let me tell you this, failure is not the opposite of success, it's a part of success. We must embrace failure and learn from it. And as for not knowing where to start, let me give you a simple formula that has worked for me and countless others. First, be specific about what you want. Don't just say, I want to be rich. Instead, say, I want to earn one million dollars in the next five years. Be specific, and your mind will start to work towards making it a reality. Next, write down your goals. As I mentioned earlier, goals without writing them down are just dreams. Writing them down gives them power and holds you accountable. Then, set a deadline for each goal. This creates a sense of urgency and motivates you to take action. Once you have your goals written down, break them down into smaller actionable steps. This makes them less overwhelming and more achievable. And finally, take action every day towards your goals. It doesn't have to be a big action, even small steps count. The key is to be consistent and keep moving forward. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I don't achieve my goals? Well, my friends, I have a simple answer for that, adjust and readjust. Life is not a straight line, it's full of twists and turns. And sometimes our goals may change, and that's okay. The important thing is to keep setting goals and taking action towards them. You see, setting goals is not just about achieving them, it's about the journey. It's about becoming the best version of ourselves and constantly growing and evolving. And that, my friends, is the beauty of personal development. Now, to the number one way to master your mindset, positive self-talk. I have spent decades studying and teaching personal development, and I can confidently say that this one practice has the power to transform your life in ways you never thought possible. So what is this powerful practice, you may ask? It is none other than positive self-talk. Yes, you heard me right. The way we talk to ourselves has a profound impact on our thoughts, emotions, and actions. And in order to achieve success and fulfillment in life, we must first master our mindset through positive self-talk. Now, some of you may be skeptical. You may be thinking, how can talking to myself make any difference? 
But let me tell you, my friends, our thoughts and words have immense power. They shape our beliefs, which in turn shape our actions, and ultimately our results. Think about it. How many times have you talked yourself out of something? How many times have you let negative self-talk hold you back from pursuing your dreams? We are our own worst critics. And if we continue to feed ourselves with negative thoughts and words, we will never reach our full potential. On the other hand, positive self-talk has the power to uplift us, motivate us, and push us towards greatness. When we speak to ourselves with kindness, encouragement, and belief, we create a positive mindset that allows us to overcome challenges and achieve our goals. But let me be clear. Positive self-talk is not about being delusional or ignoring our problems. It is about acknowledging our struggles and choosing to focus on the solutions instead of dwelling on the negatives. It is about shifting our perspective and finding the good in every situation. So how can we practice positive self-talk? The first step is to become aware of our inner dialogue. Pay attention to the thoughts and words that run through your mind. Are they uplifting or self-defeating? Are they empowering or limiting? Once you become aware of your self-talk, you can start to change it. The second step is to replace negative self-talk with positive affirmations. Affirmations are powerful statements that we repeat to ourselves to reinforce positive beliefs. For example, instead of saying, I can't do this, say, I am capable, and I will figure it out. Instead of saying, I am not good enough, say, I am worthy, and I am enough. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't believe these affirmations. And that is okay. It takes time and practice to change our beliefs. But here's the thing. Our thoughts and words have a way of becoming our reality. So even if you don't fully believe in your affirmations at first, keep repeating them. Eventually, your mind will start to believe them, and your actions will follow. The third step is to surround yourself with positivity. Our environment plays a huge role in our mindset. If we surround ourselves with negative people and situations, it's easy to fall into negative self-talk. But if we surround ourselves with positive and supportive individuals, it can uplift us and reinforce our positive self-talk. And finally, the most important step is to be patient and persistent. Mastering your mindset through positive self-talk is not a one-time thing. It's a daily practice. It takes time and effort to change our thoughts and beliefs. But I can assure you, it is worth it. In closing, my friends, the number one way to master your mindset is through positive self-talk. So let's commit to speaking kindly and positively to ourselves and watch as our mindset and our lives change for the better. Thank you.